Hey everyone, welcome back. There's been a lot happening across ICP lately. And today we are covering three updates worth your time. First, we'll break down what's changing with Internet Identity 2.0 and why users are paying attention. Then we'll look at Fun AI's new Macau update, which brings more clarity and control for developers. And finally, we'll explore how Chain Site is giving builders more flexibility with on-chain indices. Before we jump in, a quick nod, if you find value in these updates and want to support independent Web3 reporting, you can now donate directly to Ledger Life. Your support helps us continue sharing projects that matter without ads or hype. Details are in the description. Now let's get into it. The team behind Internet Identity 2.0 has officially responded to a wave of user concerns following the recent authentication upgrade. If you have used Internet Identity before, you will probably recognize the identity number that was assigned when you first signed up. It looked official, it felt secure, but as the developers have now made clear, that number was never actually a security feature. It was just an identifier, a way to label your presence on the system. Real protection came from your device that can be biometrics, pins, security keys. That's what held the actual keys. So leaning on the identity number for safety, that was never the point. With version 2.0, that misunderstanding is being addressed directly. Under the updated system, whenever you register a passkey using WebAuthn, you will be asked to actively verify your identity. This isn't optional. It's a required step. Face ID, fingerprint, in whatever method your device uses, you will need to use it. This differs from version 1.0, where that step was only marked as preferred, which meant some logins didn't even require user re-authentication. If you are using a UB key, this change is going to be noticeable. You will now need to enter a PIN every time you authenticate with it. But the upside is pretty clear. Your private keys stay locked inside the secure hardware of the key. Even if someone gets their hands on the device, they can't use it unless they also know the PIN. Now, this has led to concerns, especially from people using older passkeys. For example, if your version 1.0 passkey was tied only to a ledger device, you might be worried about being logged out. The short answer is not yet. Internet Identity 2.0 includes a migration flow that lets you sign in using what's called a non-discoverable key. But once you are in, you will be asked to register a new discoverable passkey. That part is non-negotiable going forward. And yes, the 1.0 methods won't stick around forever. The domain that Internet Identity operates on has changed and the way it handles credentials is evolving with it. So sooner or later, everyone will need to update. Another question floating around is about fail safes. What happens if the subnet that runs internet identity goes down? Can you export your private key as a PEM file or something similar to access assets elsewhere? At the moment, no, that's not supported, but it's on their radar. The team has acknowledged that users want compatibility with alternative frontends. For now, though, the focus is on making security more usable, not less. One more thing, seed phrases. A lot of users rely on them in other ecosystems to recover access. They are not available yet in Internet Identity 2.0, but the idea is being developed. The team is working on a way to introduce seed phrases without linking them to that old identity number system. Finally, there is a two-factor authentication option in the works. It's still in development, but it's expected to give users a bit more control over their own security settings. So while it's not perfect yet, Internet Identity 2.0 is clearly moving toward clearer, stronger user predictions by cutting out confusion and reinforcing what really keeps your account safe. Next up, Fun AI has just launched its latest update, codenamed Macau. This one is all about clarity and control, especially when it comes to how developers monitor cycle usage on the platform. The headline features a cycle burn rate distribution panel and a burn rate indicator. These new tools give you a much clearer view of how cycles are being consumed, where the load is going, and what areas might need tuning. It's the kind of thing that helps developers optimize without digging through logs or guessing. They have also added a notification system for when the minor limit is reached. 
This gives users faster feedback about capacity limits so they can adjust without unnecessary downtime. There has been a cleanup of the whitelist as well, removing stale or unused entries. And for those accessing fun AI on mobile, the experience should now be much smoother with updates to improve responsiveness across screen sizes. What's important to note is that this release fits into a broader pattern for fun AI. While the project is ultimately about enabling AI-powered, user-generated apps to run on decentralized infrastructure, updates like Macau show a strong focus on practical day-to-day -day improvements. The ambition is big, but the attention to small things is what helps real users. The real test, of course, will be how developers interact with these features in the wild. But based on what's in the update, it looks like a meaningful improvement in how devs manage performance and responsiveness in inside the fun AI ecosystem. Finally, Chainsight has rolled out a major upgrade to its infrastructure designed to give users more control over how on-chain indices are created and managed. At the heart of it is the new Index Engine, which allows users to build custom index baskets, automate rebalancing rules, and publish everything directly on-chain for transparency. They have also expanded their Oracle system. The updated multi-source Oracle now pulls in data from sources like Chainlink and Pyth with plans to include volume, market cap, and total value locked. That means index logic can respond more accurately to shifting market conditions. Another key feature is the cross-chain reader, which tracks price and liquidity data across multiple chains, including EVM networks, Solana, and Move-based platforms. This lets users create indices that work across ecosystems and maintain a unified portfolio view. Execution is handled through threshold signing, removing the need for multi-sigs or bridges, and reducing central points of failure. All of this supports chain sites aim to serve as a full backend layer for DeFi builders, offering programmable control from data intake through to execution. So that's the latest from Internet Identity, Fun AI, and Chainsight, three projects making quiet but meaningful progress in how decentralized tech is used and built. If you found this breakdown useful, hit like, subscribe, and tap the bell so you don't miss future updates. And if you would like to help keep Ledger Life independent and ad-free, donations are welcome. Check the description below for donation info and links to all the projects we talked about today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.